So you guys having fun? Yeah. Great. Oh, sure. <laughs> First time for me. I had no idea what I'd been missing. Yeah. You've been missed. Yeah. You've been missed. So um, I think we'll start with you. How, I mean, how the idea come to your head, and what do you think about the following? And you're part of a 25-year-old uh, history-making movie. I mean, it's a complete trip because I... It was like all these people here. I mean, I was completely a fan of the series for, you know, time immemorial. I was 12 years old when I was sitting in the living room of my house in 1981 watching the first NBC showing of Halloween, the original movie, and nobody else in the family wanted to, to, to watch it because it got too scary. So <laughs> I sat there alone and in the dark and watched this and was terrified and then riveted. And, and from then it became a thing where I was completely engrossed with these films. And... Uh, <sighs> Cut to when I was 19 years old and I got an audience with the great Mustafa Akkad and uh, <laughs> through whatever connections um, I, I could muster. We'll leave it there. That's yeah, twice. leave it there. Um, and I, um, I just was so bent on this. I mean, I, I let him know that I knew these films better than anybody in the world, at least I thought so at the time, until I <laughs> met all of these people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... Um, you know, it was through that, uh, he remembered me six years later. It took them between Halloween 5 and 6 to, to get another film off the ground. And uh, I, for, by whatever reason it was, I mean, I think they had gone through some other drafts and some other writers that weren't working out. And I think he was just sort of taken with my passion for this whole thing. And um, I got the opportunity to come in and pitch it. And I sort of said to him and to Paul Freeman and to Malik Akkad, I said, why don't we do something that's scary and psychological like Rosemary's Baby? And that was really the idea yeah. that yeah. got it started. Now, I read somewhere you actually asked for it to be back here in South Pass <laughs> instead I, of Utah. I wanted a lot of things. I was such a devout fan of the original movie, so I just kept yeah. kind of going back to the original. And as I was writing, I envisioned the, the Myers house that's up the street here. And I actually, I think, I think even took some pictures of that house so that when they went scouting in Salt Lake City where they intended to make the film, they would find something that looked very close to it. I think in Halloween 5, the, the house didn't yeah. look anything like the Myers house. So, you know, we kind of went back to the idea of trying to get it back to the... Uh, the essence of the original Halloween. I had a daughter who was, uh, whatever age she was at, we were having difficulties. And she saw this movie and she said, I never forgot it. She said to me, now I know I saw the real you in that <laughs> film. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, she like, was perfect for her at that point. You know? But we're good friends now. <laughs> and I'm not that way. <laughs> and, he, and he died so well. Yeah. Yeah, I understand it's a famous death scene. Now, as his daughter, <laughs> do you get along with him now? <laughs> I haven't seen him in nine years. <laughs> That's, well, Janice. Is this on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you were telling me last night how you were in L.A., moved to Salt Lake, or vice versa. So what did, and you ended up in the film. So if you could touch on that a little. Well, I was in, uh, I lived in Redondo Beach and moved up to Salt Lake City. And about two months after I moved up there, I got a casting call. And I was brand new up there, you know. I hadn't, I did one thing. And then this casting agent, we talked, and uh, he said, I'm from LA. And I said, I just moved up here. And he said, wait a minute. You mean, we, I came all the way to Salt Lake City to find somebody from LA to play this part? And I said, yep. <laughs> so uh, that's how it all got started, yeah. Was that your real house? Hmm? Is that really your house? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> uh, my house isn't anywhere near that nice. <laughs> and I want to say something when I have the mic. I want Mike and Vince and uh, the other Mike, Kenny, to stand up, and I want you guys to give them a hand. They are number one fans, and I met them the first night I was here. Get up. And they gave... <laughs> They gave me the courage to sit out at that table and have pictures in front of me because I never thought anybody would want my picture. So thanks, you guys. Thanks. Um, do we have any questions? I'm going to open it up to the audience. Please get in line. Okay. Well, uh, first, a comment for Bradford. I remember seeing Six, which is my favorite, got the thorn tattoo, you know, the whole nine yards. My favorite, too. <laughs> 
But I remember sitting in the theater, in a four and five in the theater, and everybody always cringed and covered their eyes whenever Michael was after somebody. Everybody in the theater stood up and clapped when he died. What an awesome <laughs> character. But no, you played it very well. And uh, for Marianne, I just wanted to tell you, you know, Jamie Lee wasn't here, but you were here. That's all that matters to me. Thank you for showing up. Oh my God, thank you so much. That's so sweet. This is from Mr. English. My wife and I are fans of yours, and ever since Halloween 6, a certain line has stuck out to us, and that is, I've had enough of this Michael Myers bullshit. Could you please say that for us? We'd greatly appreciate it. I, I don't remember how I said it then, but I've had enough of this Michael Myers bullshit. Yeah. Because <laughs> because he gets many many more autographs than I do. <laughs> Every one of them. Uh, I was wondering if any of you had any opinions or thoughts on the on the producer's cut of Halloween Six versus the theatrical. Well, if you can sell it to me, I'd be happy to go to eBay and buy it from you because everybody's been buying it there for the past eight years. I mean, I just don't understand why the studio doesn't release this other version of the movie. It's, it's a better version. Yeah, there is a petition out. On one of the tables I saw. On my table. Uh, yeah, okay. He put it. <laughs> they, they'd have to admit that they were wrong. <laughs> they were. <laughs> Hi, um, first I wanted to thank you guys for being part of the best of the sequels, I think. Um, and wow. second is, uh, Janice, I, w I was wondering if uh, you'd be able to recite your line, uh, do you know why we celebrate Halloween? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that was great. Uh, but you have to promise me that if I've forgotten anything, well, you okay. will prompt me. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and then I'll do it once through, and if I do it again, will you do it with me? <laughs> sure. Because I think a lot of you know it. Okay. Do you know why we celebrate Halloween? Oh, a long time ago, it was a night of great power when the spirits of the dead would come home hoping to warm themselves by the fireside. Oh, huge bonfires were lit all over the land. People had, it was such a marvelous celebration. People danced and they played games, and they put on costumes hoping to ward off the evil spirits, especially the boogeyman. But wait, wait, do you hear the voice? Do you hear the voice? That's the voice that little Mikey Myers heard the night he murdered his sister. The voice told him, kill your whole family. Excuse me, I'm leaving. This woman is too good. <laughs> oh, good. They wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, ever since I learned how to do it, my grandkids are all, they don't even wait till Halloween. Grando, do that laugh for me. <laughs> I had no idea that monologue would have such legs. I, uh, <laughs> Goosebumps. Again, would you do it with me? No. <laughs> no all, right. Sure. all right, never mind. <laughs> Thanks. This was great. You Kim, this now, this was your first Halloween film, but not your first horror film. So what was the experience like for you? Um, I had a great time. I had a great time on it. And um, I can remember hanging upside down. But that's about all I remember. She came falling out of the hatch in the sort of the, the, right. the, 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 yeah, the attic hatch when yes. she conveniently walked by in the body like in a Halloween oh, movie. Yeah, yeah. It drops oh, out Halloween of the Halloween body right. dropped down, yes. Um, but I did something with stunts or something that I had to do with stunts. But I was well taken care of. <laughs> you certainly were. <laughs> and Mary Ann, what was that fall? How did, how did you do that fall? Uh, I did not do that fall. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's a stunt double. <laughs> 
Um, and uh, had I done the fall, I would not have flown out of the window in a swan dive. <laughs> <laughs> I would have tried to make it look a little bit more um, realistic if someone's actually jumping out of a window. But, um, you know, I don't get paid the big bucks to do stunts, so I really have no say in the matter. But you would have done it. Had they paid you, they would have, you would have done that stunt, right? You know? <laughs> no way! <laughs> Now, uh, the tradition of the Halloween seems to be, you know, real neighborhood streets, stores. Was that what it was like for you guys? Did you actually use a real neighborhood, or was it a set? No, it was, it was a real neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. I think that that adds a lot to the films. I think, I, I, I agree. That's what I love. I mean, especially the, those of you guys who went on the tour just for the first movie. I mean, isn't that better than going on a back lot somewhere? Yeah. And, and, and one of the things I remember at Halloween 6 was that it was, was interesting is that it was a what well, was all shot at this time of year and it was freezing and it started snowing early in Salt Lake City when we shot it and but the leaves were all real so we didn't have to like the other Halloween movies like get a bunch of fake leaves and like dump them and then collect them again and reuse them they were all there and um, it, I, I seem to remember like the set was it was almost like this reversal the interior of where Tommy Doyle lived in the Mrs. Blankenship house was actually shot inside of the house that was used as the Myers house so technically when he was looking across the street he was looking at the opposite, at the opposite <laughs> yeah, direction. Yeah. He was looking at the other house. It was like the house we were supposed to be in. So, That's interesting. Yeah. I've had a job raking that le those leaves every year since. The people <laughs> pay well. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? This questions for Kim. Loved you in Better Off Dead. Better Off Dead. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You made me crack up in that movie, but in in the Halloween movie, you uh, seemed like you really got into being a person for horror flicks. Is this, is this a new avenue that you're maybe moving to to kind of get into another horror flick? Well, I, I just finished doing one uh, called The Storyteller. So I, I'm not quite sure, but don't be afraid of the dark and this movie and I can't I can't think of any others. It may be. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. How about working with Donald Pleasance on the last one? How was that for everybody? Great. Really wonderful. An honor. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. And this series is not the same without him, I, I, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to find a replacement for Donald. I mean, he was very unique, and he brought a lot of class to the, to the franchise. Go ahead. First, I want to say it's great to see you all here. Um, wow. Um, we've hit all the other panels with this. Now it's your turn. What would be your absolute favorite moments of the film? I have no doubts about my favorite moment. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> we'll start with Kim. Um, I guess when I was running through the sheets and I lost my glasses, it, it seemed to get me prepared for everything else. I think uh, slapping Marianne was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, but actually, my most fun one, and I, I, I um, you know, you see some of the dailies, but I don't usually watch films, so I haven't, I haven't seen, I mean, I don't watch my own films, you know, it just feels funny to me. And, but I, I, I uh, remember, so I don't know how it was in the movie, but my favorite moment in the movie was when I was pinned up against the, you know, all the sparks and fire going on, and uh, George Wilbur's looking at me, you know, I don't know if the camera ever showed this. I mean, must have, they must have come around, but I'm against the wall, and he's looking at me, you know, he's going, there's this curious little boy-like thing, you know, what's going on, you know. That was my favorite. Michael Trademark. And then when Paul paid me. That was... <laughs> no, one of my favorite parts besides the, do you know what all... Um, <laughs> was um, the, the end that's in the producer's cut when there are five or six of us that are in the cult, by the way, dressed up in those weird cult costumes, and we're in the this huge big barn. Uh, it had been a, uh, a mill, a mill, 
and we had candles all lit all over the place. So many candles that we lit the place on fire, <laughs> and we had to get out in a hurry um, and reshoot. But uh, that ending, that cult ending with all the costumes was really creepy. I personally love the scene where Marianne sees Beth in the window, and it's kind of a sort of very rear window scene where she says, he's in the room, get out. I thought that was a like very John Carpenter style Halloween. That's my favorite moment too. I wanted to know one more thing. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, but Marianne, you've made this trip worthwhile for me, personally. You're like the greatest. I wanted to know if you would give me squeeze. Absolutely. <laughs> Now that's a fan. Um, I'd like to know if any of you uh, have any comment on how the storyline kind of left off at six and that seven and eight, uh, for lack of a better word, disregards the four, five, six. And if you think that, you know, down the road they should bring the two together and kind of explain the two different storylines. There's actually three storylines if you think about it. Or four if you incorporate three. <laughs> we don't talk about three. Oh, okay. I think they should start a fourth and then bring it together after that. Yeah. Actually, in the That's script to Halloween 6, there was a, a lot of n a nods to Halloween, the other Halloween movies, but there was a scene that it didn't make it, but um, where, where Brad's character came home and was supposed to turn the television on, and Halloween 3 would have been playing. And. <laughs> Sort of what they did in Halloween 3, they had Halloween 1 and relegated it to just a movie. And I thought, well, let's just do the same thing and get them back for that. <laughs> I keep reminding them that Mrs. Blankenship never died in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's on a resume. <laughs> because we had uh, created the role of... Uh, the son to Jamie Lee, it took a different course. Yeah. And out of that came Josh Hartnett, uh, who has since become a big movie star. So we launched his career in Halloween. All right, I just want to say I'm glad to see all of you guys here, like together, because like for some of the other movies, you know, there's a couple people representing from each movie. So like to have everybody here, like you don't see anybody from H2O, but like to see everybody from that movie that was like made a big difference here, I'd like to thank you guys for that. Um, also, um, <laughs> Mr. Strode, um, you like made this a uh, huge impact on me. Um, one thing, I'm, I'm happy. You don't beat your kids, do you? No, 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 no. No, I don't want to squeeze or anything, okay? <laughs> I don't want to squeeze. You, you, you kind of like... send up a substitute. Yeah, you, you kind of like made me happy and mad at the same time. Um, basically, you were like this big tough guy, you know, and like when I was younger, I was always scared of Michael, so I thought you were going to be the one to get him for me, but you know, you didn't. Um, <laughs> whatever, but um, just thank you. You made a big impact on me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we want to thank everybody, and especially the cast of Halloween 6. You have a big following. I'm honored to be up here with you. And uh, please enjoy the rest of the convention, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.